In June 2015, my life changed forever. Our daughter Morgan was born. On June 5th, 2016, she turned one year old, and I wanted to give her something really special. I started with that figured maple I picked up at the hardwood dealer in my trip to the wood store video. I know this project is for a kid, but it's what I had in the shop. I started breaking down the stock into more manageable pieces and milling it down. I love the part where you take a board from rough sawn to whoa. I wanted the table to be modular and grow with Morgan and serve multiple purposes. A water table, sandbox, dry erase board, or Lego table, but for now I'm focusing on fitting some bins I picked up. So I cut a frame and dry fit everything. Morgan likes to collect things and put things in other things, then take them back out again. So I thought these would be good dry or with water toys in them. Once I had marked where the bins went, I cut a center section to fill in the rest. I used biscuits for the center section and glued everything up. I like to use bar clamps when making mitered frames because you can apply localized pressure if you need to close up any gaps in the miters. <sighs> Part 2. I really wanted to splay the legs to make it more stable for a teetering toddler, so I needed to figure out how to make angled mortise and tenons. I took a piece of cardboard, decided on a 2 on 12 pitch, and drew a template to scale to help with the measurements. I planed down the stock and started cutting my pieces to size. I used a shot made angle finder to measure the angle of the 2 on 12 pitch, which ended up to be about 9 degrees. I cut four legs, then checked them against my template. Then I cut my stretchers and marked them for tenons. On the legs, I marked the center with a shot made marking gauge, then headed off to the drill press. I needed to make a simple table and fence to reference off of when I made the angled mortises. A scrap piece of plywood sufficed and I bolted it to the table. When it came time to angle the table, I was really surprised to find that not any normal wrench would be able to access the bolt. Not only that, but it was a one inch bolt head which I didn't have a socket for on hand, nor did I have the half inch drive ratchet to turn it. Once I had the table at an angle, I hogged out most of the material with a forced bit. Then cleaned up the mortises with a chisel. For the angled tenons, I made a jig for the table saw and clamped some scrap to the jig using a leg as a reference. I cut the cheeks with the jig, then cut the shoulders with the miter gauge. I finished the tenons with the Japanese hand saw, then switched over to an antique tenon saw that I had recently refurbished. That seemed to work a little better. I did an experiment with this project, comparing squared mortise and tenons versus rounded ones. Personally, I prefer squaring off the mortises rather than rounding the tenon. Granted, this is curly hard maple, so it was a difficult grain to work. Once I had everything dry fit, I decided I wanted to use a contrasting wood for a trestle, so I grabbed a piece of cherry. I cut half lap joints on the trestle and bottom stretchers. I cut those with my sled at the table saw. I drilled some big holes and some pilot holes in the top stretchers to attach the top later. To keep the edges a little safer for the kid, I put a stopped chamfer profile on all the base pieces. 
I pre-sanded everything, then assembled the base with glue. I cut some scrap at 9 degrees to help with the clamping pressure. To reinforce the miter joints, I used the same jig for the tenons, but screwed in some scrap at 45 degrees to make a cradle to cut a kerf for some splines. I don't have a saw blade that leaves a flat bottom kerf, so I'm using my router with a straight bit in it. I had some thinner cherry laying around, so I planed it down to fit the slots, then glued them in as splines, then cut them flush once the glue is dry. I glued the trestle in place, then sanded and finished the top and base with armor seal. This is a table, not a chew toy, so I'm not worried about the finish being food safe. My favorite word lately to describe wood has been chatoyant. It basically describes the cat's eye effect in certain grains. Look it up. And with that, I was done with this chapter of this table. Yeah, I used some pretty fancy wood, but it was for my daughter, and who's to say a dad can't build his daughter the fanciest damn kid's table there ever was? She seems to like it okay, and really that's all I care about. I'll continue to build more inserts for the table as she grows, but for now I couldn't be happier seeing my daughter smile using something that I made her. Happy birthday, Morgan. Oh, hey. Well, since you're still here, it means that you watched the whole video, which I appreciate, um, and hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did enjoy it, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Um, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel and you'll get lots of these videos as I release them. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun making these videos and the projects that come out of them um, and me kind of finding my style and telling a story. Um, so the one thing that I would ask of you, other than liking and subscribing, is maybe share this with a friend. Uh, if you think that they might find enjoyment in watching this or they might learn something or get inspired to make something themselves, um, go ahead and share it with them. Uh, maybe they'll thank you. Maybe they'll build you something uh, because they found my channel through you. Um, so that would just be really helpful. <laughs> uh, until next time, guys, I'm Will Walker. This is the William Walker Company Project channel. I'll catch you soon.